today we're going to talk about gender reveals gone wrong, which I feel like is a phenomenon, especially in the last few years. We've covered it on our show, DBL. And it's sad because the three that we're going to cover just scratches the surface. And it really is the definition and the epitome of the title of our podcast, Dying for Likes, because lives right. were lost. And I say that respectful. Absolutely. We're, we're going to do a deep dive because again, this is happening for a reason. We got to unpack why this is happening. I think the more that we yes. can look at this new phenomena, which is social media, which is trying to get some sort of Klaus, or maybe it's just purely validation through likes, right. it's costing people their lives. Yeah. So we're going to start with the first one. Okay, Al, you Let's may remember. In fact, I believe we covered all three of these oh. over the last couple of years on DBL. And then some, unfortunately, There's the so list, many. we're going to have many of these episodes. So Christopher Peckney, may he rest in peace. Seriously, 28 years old, upstate New York, near the Catskills, dad to be, okay? Dad to be, let's just think about that, okay? About super excited, his wife is super excited. They're about to introduce a new child to their family. Who knows what it took to get pregnant, right? Everybody has their own story. Right. But the fact that the anticipation was there, the excitement was there, the baby room may have been done, and then this dad never lives to see his child because of what happened. Okay. So upstate New York. And what happened was he was actually building a device for this gender reveal. Okay. And he was working on the device when it blew up before the party. So this happened on a Sunday. The party was when supposed you say device. Is this like some supposed to be something like that was supposed to catalyze like something to explode? Yeah, it was an explosion that would say I would what that would either be like blue or pink. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. And he thought that he was able. So first and foremost, this family is very beloved in the Catskills. They have a diner there that's been around since the 1980s. It's the Robin Hood Diner. So this is a family that is very loved everybody feels like they know them they go to the diner they get to know the dad the brothers yeah. i like those spots right i like those spots. so when it happened it affected the entire town mm -hmm. now we all know the collateral damage to that right even if it's just they're not a well beloved family and that happens the collateral damage is now the wife is a single mom yes now the dad never gets the opportunity to meet his child. Now the child grows up and learns they lost their dad. And who knows if the child's going to bring it upon themselves blame and themselves. blame themselves. So let's start with the fact on why do you feel, Al, that it was so imperative for him? And again, this is no disrespect. We we honestly, like my heart, I can't imagine if this happened. And I think we can all imagine all of us want to do the very best for our gender reveal parties. Right. But there is a line here right. where if Mark came up to me and said, I'm going to build a, a, a bomb, so to speak, to have the craziest gender reveal party ever, I'd say absolutely not. Again, no disrespect yeah. to the family, but where do you think this line was See, crossed? That's the thing. I, and what motivated I, it? I, I think that the line wasn't crossed, Sam. I think the line is moved. I think that it moves because I don't think the first thing that you and your husband talk about in terms of this gender reveal is he just comes up to you and is like, I want to build the bomb. I don't think that that's what happens. I think what happened was four years ago, he's he's like, uh, hey, the neighbor's Christmas lights are better than ours. Do you do you want to do that? And the, the, the wife's like, no, no. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go get that long stick thing. We're going to put what your husband has we're, and we're going to have the best lights in the neighborhood and then right. they do it and it's funny. And then they're like, yeah, with a little knuckle bump, we right. just showed them what's up. Even climbing and, a ladder. That's right. dangerous. Is it's, it worth it? It is. If you're trying to show the other neighbors like, hey, we this is how we're rolling over here. And the phrase keeping up with the Joneses has been around before any of us were born and will be around long after all of us are gone because it is a thing. Everybody wants to think, man, I'm cool. I'm just a regular person. Everybody has a competitive streak in them. And you, your Facebook, your Instagram, your social following is probably your cohorts, the people in your age group. And you guys are kind of competing. Oh, Sam and them just got a new Jeep Cherokee. We're okay. And then your spouse is like, why don't we have a new Jeep Cherokee? And so now you guys got to love, love. Oh, uh, Al and his spouse, they, uh, their gender reveal, they had, right. uh, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce tweet it out and and they got this uh, what are we gonna do right. so i think it just elevates so from the christmas lights i yeah. think we get to the bomb but here's the thing and i agree with your trajectory completely it makes sense it's almost evolved right to the sense though that social media listen viral 
and likes do play a part. We can all relate, right? We all feel something when a picture we put up gets like no likes. You're like, oh gosh, do you like, does yeah. that make me look bad? Do yeah. people think no Should one I likes? Should I take it down? Right. So we all been there, but we all have seen gender reveals gone viral. So in my opinion, that's highly the motivation here. And unfortunately too, not only did he lose his life and never get to be the father that he had hoped to be, but his brother, a year younger than him, 27 year old brother got severely injured. Now his brother's yeah. okay. Went to the nearby hospital was treated, but, but he was injured. Can yeah. you imagine? It's, it's a fork in the road of their family's trajectory. And it's oh, completely. It, it, the it, parents it, will never be the same. The wife will never the be the same family was traumatized that day. I mean, in terms of siblings that will not be born and things that will not happen. And I'm not trying to pile on. I'm just saying that's how grave the, these decisions are. When somebody says, I'm going to do a gender reveal and I'm going to jump parachute. And when it works, which it does 99.999% of the time, you have a great video to show your kids. But when it doesn't, the catastrophic fallout from that, right. it'd be like, if uh but how did it get from cakes right like mm -hmm. we used to cake and a lot of people would say gender reveals are outdated because of the spectrum of gender identity right. but we did a cake for sophie and then we did a, and you're not supposed to know right like when you go at least for me personally i don't know what your story is or if you even entertained it but for me we didn't do it for social media right. we did it for our parents but we you go to the your OBGYN. They give you a sealed envelope. It took everything in me not to open up that That's envelope. Great. I don't know if I could have done and that. And then you pass it to the baker. The baker will make your cake. Like we didn't do colors. We did, I think, banana for boys. That's strawberry banana. <laughs> you got banana bread for your no bananas inside, like the boy and the penis. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> and strawberry for girl. Levels. So Sophie, we cut it open. There was strawberry, so we knew it was a girl. Now for the I'm uncomfortable with a strawberry representing a girl. <laughs> that's very <laughs> weird. That's not great. And then for miles, we like popped a balloon. And the same thing, Mark had to go to like party city. Yeah. And the doctor like legit like faxed over and Mark's like, oh, I said, Mark, you better go sit in the parking lot because you're going to see them. Like, I forget if it just said boy or girl inside. And it's so ridiculous to think about it, but it was fun for Sophie right. to pop the balloon and see boy. And right? you're surprised too. Right. So I get why people do gender reveals, but there is a line. You'll say the line shifted. There's not a firm line and it's probably still shifting, but it's, uh, it's well, not me, worth let, the let light. Let me ask you, cause you're the most honest person I know. So let's say in an imaginary world, my spouse and I do a gender reveal and it's cake and we okay. cut the cake. It's a nice cake. Yeah, it's blue inside. We're having our imaginary boy and it gets. 417 likes, which is a lot for our neighborhood, right. for our area. Yeah. When it's time for Mark and Sam to do their gender reveal, are they not going to level up? Y'all yeah. not y'all not going to get past that 417, no, no matter what. But bombs, you guys, the bombs is a lot. Devices, but I'm saying, come on. The thinking is right. like, no, we can all like relate we to the thinking. leveling up we, a little bit, you know? We all can relate to the thinking, but I think we all need to hold each other accountable. And, that, and that's terrible. The and bombs it, thing. Somebody should have stepped in and been like, okay, or an explosive. have a moment with you. Yes, right. it, the explosive, yes. And if someone out there, I think it's, again, we talk about it on this podcast, see something, say something. If there is, a gender reveal that went right that involved a device i would not congratulate that person no, because no. that will lead to other people copying it and bad things can happen right. so this leads me to another gender reveal okay this is dennis dickey 37 tucson arizona and this is a former not former he's a u.s border patrol but he was off duty okay now his explosion if you remember in arizona the sawmill fire oh yes and i believe we covered the sawmill fire on our show and here's where this gets a little complicated because we'll get to how he atoned for it right he did not lose his life but let me tell you let me tell you the damage before we get into what happened so it burned down forty-five thousand acres mm -hmm. you think about the wildlife you think about the homes eight million dollars worth of damage this was back in 2017 in april and when it did happen, so what he did, and I watched the video mm. and I almost felt weird watching it because you're watching your, you feel complicit to a degree, right? Cause it right. is, absolutely, it is captivating. And I think that's why these videos go viral because they are captivating. Right. So what he did is you look at, first of all, I don't know why anybody would deal with explosives 
when you look at the video, you see grass that is brown. Like I just see like something that's going to ignite kindling fire. almost. <laughs> yes. The earth's kindling exactly. right underneath your explosive. Exactly. Stuff. So you watch the video and he had like, bear with me, but like a stick yards away from him with girl boy. And then he would, he was going to shoot at it, which would then ignite the explosive, which would then throw out either a blue powder or a pink powder. Okay. So that was the whole goal. Now, what happened was, and I should name, because I do have the name of this explosion. If you're familiar with these types of things, I am not, but this explosion is called Tannerite. If I'm saying that right, I think I've heard of that highly explosive, right? I don't even know if you should be handling that. Right. I think it's like for people that dig through the, like the, mining. Yeah. Like that. I think that's what it's for. Like old school and Kelly, can you look up what Tannerite is? Kelly, but I think it is. I mean, it kind of sounds Tannerite. like dynamite. It does right. sound like it's in that family. Highly explosive. And when you watch the video, you see for a nanosecond, some blue. So techni oh, wow. technically a boy, unless it was malfunctioned right. and then immediate fire, immediate igniting all the nearby kindling right. or it's yeah. kindling. Right. And that started the fire that we all know as, as the sawmill fire. Now here's the other side of it where he did, you know, handle, he immediately called the authorities, immediately admitted it, knowing that he just started a wildfire because it ignited like that. Oh my God. He called the authorities, said, I started this fire. You need to come quick. It's burning quickly. And what happened was, is not only did he admit it, he was in his trial, very um, remorseful. He ended up doing restitution of, of, I believe, $8 million. I don't know how he you pay do that. that. Well, I don't know how you do that with a, you know, a border patrol salary. I don't know how that happens. If like, he might have to sell his house. Well, I, you I mean, have I'm the Tannerite. Tell me what Tannerite yes, is. Yes. I mean, before we get back to that yeah. depressing, uh, Tannerite is a brand of binary explosive targets used for firearms practice <sighs> and sold in kits form, in kit form. Wow. So. You know, you don't uh, want to be handling combination of oxidizers and fuel, uh, primarily aluminum powder, and it comes into separate components that are then mixed by the user. So, Yikes. I mean, two pounds equals an explosive, two pounds equals an explosive according Man. to Kelly. That is terrifying. And again, even like smoking a cigarette, where if you see the video with grass that dried out, I can't imagine anybody in their right mind thinking that that's going to be okay. So, then not only did he have to be ordered the restitution of 8 million, not only did he call the authorities, not only did he admit it, but he also part of his sentencing. And I like this part was he had to do like a PSA with the national like forest right. association and warn other people because gender reveals, I feel like we're tapering off a little bit because of all the bad news. Right. Thank goodness. But for about two years, we were seeing viral, scary gender reveals left and right. Right. So I think this PSA hopefully changed some minds. Yeah, it, it almost seemed like they turned into almost like low level stunt reveals mm -hmm. rather than like, you know, things where you would just think with a lot of these gender reveals, just when Kelly said, you know, it's two pounds, it's a lot. You would just think that there would be just certain kind of stop gaps that are in your mind where you're like, should I be holding this right now? Should I be aiming a t shirt cannon at my great grandmother's face right now? Right. You would just think that there would be things where they get real when you hold them. You know, I did a lot of USO tours and like the soldiers sometimes would let you hold, like they'd let you. How did that make you and feel? And just like, you just felt, you immediately feel the power of this machine, right. Right. you know? Right. And you would think when you're handling explosives, well, I remember working, uh, you, you know, I worked in a, in a medical lab for almost two years at uh, Rhode Island Hospital. Did you work with like like highly? Yes, you're Ooh. working with sulfur. You're working with, uh, you know, it, it, especially things that the scarier thing is when you're a neophyte, like I was just kind of, you know, graduate Scary. school. You don't know because some chemicals, like they say, don't like don't use bleach and what is it bleach and what's the other one that you're not supposed to mix with your laundry, you'll pass out. What? I don't know. Bleach this. and what's the other one? You better tell me this. Kelly, our producer is going to look it up. Bleach and I don't know this. You don't mix, terrifies they, make, me. they make like a toxic fume when they mix together. That's the scary thing about chemicals. Is it chemicals. a common household item like bleach so. and ammonia maybe? maybe like Windex? That. I think it's bleach. But and why ammonia. would you mix bleach? I guess if you're kit cleaning your counters, yeah, but like you're not supposed to mix those two things and they're very common. Like, uh, oh, that is so scary. I'm so glad we're going to look this up because this could save yes. my life 
ammonia. It's, yeah. That and is Kelly, terrifying. Kelly, what does it say happens? Uh, when combined, these two common household cleaners release toxic um, the, gas. Okay, toxic yeah. gas. And I bet it's like a silent it's killer. A, yeah, it's just a fume. And I mean, sometimes like when you would be working under the hood, that's uh, when you have your mask and your goggles on and there's like a glass that goes down about to I've about forearm length and you're working footage, underneath yeah. it because there's a huge hood under there soaking, uh, sucking those fumes oh, up, almost so like you would have in a high-end kitchen. Wow. So that we had that, uh, you know, on, on a, it was at a hot, it was through a university, but it was on a hospital's campus right. with, you know, things that were ready for fumes. I have to imagine there's a lot of lay people that are probably mixing things together and they do not know what they're Yikes. doing. So you can mix something together. It can make a toxic gas. It can make an instant explosion. That it can make terrifying. something that slowly over the course of years, you didn't even realize, but it was just uh, slowly well, getting think you about sick. Paint thinner. Think about right. all the people out there who are like, you know, even the other day I was resurfacing my patio furniture and oh, oh I saw and that I little was, great. looks so cute. I was outside right, we'll and I was down. starting to get kind of dizzy with the paint. And then right. I went and I got a mask and it's like, be safe. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Even if it's not, you know, maybe you get a headache on the on, on the onset, but in 10 years, you don't know what kind of damage that caused. In fact, Kelly, our producer just wrote on the whiteboard with the ammonia and the bleach, right. it leads to coma and ammonia is in Windex. So right. let's say you're cleaning your kitchen counters and you, I don't know, hopefully this isn't as easily common as it seems like it could be because right. I use bleach products and I use you know, Windex, right. it's scary to me. So Every, be careful. All the stuff we're talking about is scary. And and just as you were saying this, Sam, really quickly, I want to ask your opinion as a competitive person that swam competitively. Do you think a lot of these cases that we're covering are people that are just naturally competitive people at 10 years old? They were like, let's race at 15 years old. They were like, let's race. But why now is it always cars, men though? But why is it always? Men? I think, I mean, that's, it's that's all our, men. our society baked Literally. that into you early. The first movies you see are star quarterback and cheerleader. It's the None same. None of the story. women are doing these crazy gender reveals. It's always the men. It's the way our societies it's are insane. set up for. It, you know? Yeah, they're they're proving their masculinity, right. quote unquote, and it's yeah, dangerous. The, the the bomb is not about your beautiful child coming. No, it is. That's about you. Let's it's be honest. And you can't wait right. to put that on the ground. Right. Like, right. let's be real. This definitely has to do with social media. He did get five years probation as well. Did you think that was a stiff enough sentence considering all the damage it caused? Eight million in restitution, five years probation, PSA. I'm going to say yes, and I'll tell you why. Because he seemed so genuinely remorseful that agreed. I think the punishment that he walks around with for the rest of his life will be way worse than anything we can do. I I look at jail as a are are we better as a society with this person behind bars? Do right. we think this person is going to go to and start another? Why he clearly will no. not. Yep, he will never do that we are all allowed to have a terrible day yeah. and his just went all the way. I could have been this guy a million different times in a million different ways, but luckily I'm sure somebody's like, Hey, let's go buddy. Right. You know, before I was on one of these stories. So, well, he wasn't 17, he was 37, yeah, but I think that's, having, a little, uh, that's a little, it is. It's, I it's appreciate old. your empathy mm -hmm. and listen, but at the same time, his family is now racked with debt. They welcome a child with that much more debt. Let's all be honest. Mm -hmm. Debt is stressful in a marriage. I and think a family. that's the number one breakup. Of Thousand percent. Yeah. So I know he's remorseful and I'm glad that he's paying his restitution. Okay. So our last gender reveal is definitely the most tragic, very tragic. Two lives were lost too. So this took place in Mexico. Okay. If you're familiar with Cancun, most people are, this was about 40 miles away from Love Cancun. Cancun. I've never been amazing. You've really? been everywhere. I've never been Cancun to Cancun. Is I've been to so Cabo. Beautiful. Yeah, Cancun is a little bit more party party, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily all young people. It's just like go to party and like it's the real what happens in Vegas, but Vegas, everybody records things. Cancun's like Vegas in 96. Wow. And do you perform there? I've I did the Cancun Comedy Festival. Okay. But I don't remember any of that. Because Bert our... allegedly I did that. <laughs> I, I was that was pre pre sober out. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't even remember doing a show. <laughs> I we know could have a mean. whole yeah. nother podcast wow. with yeah. yeah. It's funny too because I, eventually I want to have Mike Catherwood come on our podcast. Mike Catherwood that. was on Love Line with me and Dr. Drew and Mike Catherwood, also a comic, but he is sober for I don't know how many years, but a long time. I almost want to say a decade. But he has stories from pre sober Mike yeah. that 
blows my mind. So we need to have a whole segment with you and Mike telling your pre-sober stories. Love love to do that. Okay. So back to Mexico. Um, And again, this is a horrific story. And when Al and I try and unpack these stories and try and make sense, and some of these times we're going to get clinicians to Mm kind of weigh in, it is in no disrespect to the two lives lost. But we can add humanity to that. I think we should all hope that once we are gone, we're just not like this thing in black and white. Like, this is Sam. This is her job. This is how many kids she left behind. This is how she died. I'd like to be right. like, yep, she was in a place where a lot of people go to have a good time. And you got to unpack it. And that's it. what Cancun is. That's right. what Vegas is. So like, there's no shame in like, sometimes that goes left. Right. That's and part of this fun. one too, it didn't have anything to do with explosions or anything like that. It's almost like, I feel like a lot of people would entertain this idea if they had the means. Right. So they and their whole family flew out to this lagoon and they had this plane was going to stream boy or girl. Okay. And you've seen the video that they all start screaming. It's a girl. It's a girl. You actually hear one of their guests say this very chilling joke before doomsday. Okay. So one of their guests on a boat, they're on a boat in this lagoon, looking up, waiting to see boy or girl. And they hear girl, you hear them all scream, but he says, quote, it's all good. As long as it doesn't end up crashing into us within a nanosecond. Literally, all of a sudden, the plane crashes in the lagoon. Now, two people died. It was no no relation to the parents to be. I would assume this was somebody that they had hired. Yes, Yes. and I would assume it's the pilot and the co-pilot, which is absolutely like horrific. This is a single engine Cessna. Yeah, like a biplane, basically. And you know, it's a step above like when Snoopy would be on top of the doghouse. Right. (laughs) Right. And those families, you know, apparently those families know that this is a business and that there's a risk every time their loved ones go up. So there's no negligence or uh, the, the, the two pilots, the people in the plane were aware of the risks. The people, Almost like people that work at parachute facilities. Right. Yeah. And the people that hired them never in a million years. I mean, people hire those planes to like do advertisements, Sky writing, right? Yeah. Skywriting. So I don't think here that, of course, you know, you are trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're trying to do something fancy. Who knows if you're going to post it on social media, right. you know, to the point of the title of our whole podcast. But the fact that now that this couple forever has to feel the responsibility attached to the miracle and innocence of their little girl with the loss of two lives. Right. I don't think that's something I could shake. It would change me forever. I mean, I'd blame myself. I think the question would be, would you tell your kids? Because if you could avoid that coming out, I mean, maybe they put it together later in life, but by the time the kids are older, 14, 15 years from now, maybe that'll be so buried on the internet because there'll be so many stories after that. I don't know if that's something that you share. It's just, you know, I I think it's hard for people to really understand until you've been overseas that almost everywhere you go, the regulations that we have for employees of places is vastly different than in other places, just not there. Like, you know, when I, I used to host a kid's show uh, that came on Fox at like seven o'clock in the morning, it was called uh, Awesome Adventures. And uh, we went down to uh, Jamaica and basically it was the best job ever. I showed people what they should do on vacation with their kids. How fun. It was a great job. And so we were in Jamaica and we, as soon as you get to, I've been in Jamaica a bunch, but never like on the other side, the, the business side of it, you know, where I was like behind the scenes. So, you know, when we went to the gator farm, the guy that was driving our pontoon boat in the gator farm is like, you're going through the swamp in Jamaica and you have uh, raw chicken wings and you toss them over and trying to get the gators to, to come to your boat so people can take pictures of them. Like, this is like not a resort mm-hmm. with like fences. This is the swamp. And so I- they want, you know, this is a big deal for them in terms of advertising. So they want the gators to come close so they can get good footage to show in America for so people will come down with their kids. So the the gators weren't air quotes biting or whatever that day. So the guy that was driving our boat, talking to me just casually, shirt off, pants off down to his underwear, jumps in this swamp. No. Sam, I am like, no, I'm like this. He has like, he's floating Ooh, out. He's chills. like chin deep, like waiting. He was like clearly an expert swimmer or whatever. And he had the chicken wings and he's throwing it and it's hitting 
the bill of the whatever the part of the top of the nose of the gator and like trying to get and we me and the producer merv guy rest is so uh you know we're just like we got the shot bro come on in the boat please and i was like i'm gonna see this man i mean this is gay this is a gator park this is a gator infested but he saw the cameras he saw He's the, performing for the yeah, cameras and just overseas like in america like there would be like the, the protocol, there'd be a safety, uh, you know, flow chart on the wall with some, you know, X, red X, don't do this. Overseas, they're just, a lot of times kids, like when we do the uh, the zip lining course, the dudes that like got us hooked up and like did, they were, yeah, I did the same age of the kids I taught, like middle school, high school, like we would get a job like as a lifeguard, like they were like over the ropes course in the Costa Rican rainforest. And it's like, there's not as much regulation, so you have more fun, but it's more dangerous too. Right, right. And you got to think about all that, yeah. right? And you got to, here's the thing too. I think going back to this story, not only the trauma and the PTSD, because I can't imagine watching two people perish in a plane that I hired right in front of me imagine? on a boat. The guilt you would feel? The guilt you would feel. And I think for me too, because I try and place myself in their shoes, I would hate myself for being so like grandiose. Like, mm. why did I care? so much of having this perfect gender reveal. Why did I care? Because it ended up costing now, of course, none of it's malicious, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I would only imagine that, that someone would have those same thoughts. So again, yeah. why did they feel like that they had to have such a grandiose, uh, gender reveal? Was it for Instagram? Was it to, of course it is like at the right. end of the day, you clip that video. You're not just going to sit on it. You're going to put it right. up for everybody to see and for people to fawn over you and to make it look like you have this perfect little life. Yeah. What is the saying that a lot of people say that your Instagram is your highlight reel? Yeah. Because you look at everyone's Instagram and for me, someone that suffers with anxiety and depression, it can weigh on me when I just like doom scroll. I have to stop myself. You can limit, put a limit on your Instagram and Facebook. I can do 15 minutes a day and then it'll shut it down. That's and that great. saves me, like saves me because I tend to doom scroll and then I'm not present. And then I get short with my kids and I just want to be with my kids, but I have an addictive personality. Mm. And for me, it just makes me feel crappy when I see everyone's highlight reel, when I realize not everyone's life is perfect. Right. But and it's hard to remind yourself of that. But how great would it be if you just took the highlights? Like, if you watch like highlights of a baseball game, those final scores, one and nothing, you can make the highlights look like I know the last scene in the Spielberg movie. The right. highlights look great with anything. I know. Honestly, but well, we compare ourselves, which very natural to compare yourself yeah. to other people. Or maybe or let me ask, is it unnatural? And maybe that's why I don't scroll almost at all, because I don't feel especially as an artist that's, that tries to create through stand up. And, and, and writing, I don't know how much interaction I should have with my audience about the art that I create because I am a human being and I'm subject to, if people go, hey, we don't like that joke, don't do that anymore, I might stop doing it. Right. Or if people say we love that, that's all we wanna hear, that might be the only kind of jokes I start writing because yeah. I'm naturally or unnaturally bending to their will because at our core, most of us are people pleasers. We don't be told we're doing it's a true. good job. So I kind of, but then you start, you stop listening to your own inner voice, yeah. which is what got you where you are in the first place. Right. So that's true. And that's, and that's always been my question. You know, it just hit me for a second. This is kind of the last time that I really got, when I stopped being so deep into social media was, is it natural for in the span of 30 seconds for me to realize the Cleveland Browns quarterback isn't happy. The guy from my homecoming in 11th grade is having a baby. My aunt just got fired and she's mad that uh, there's coupons for laser tag this weekend downtown and that prices to Tampa Bay are 215 one way. Should I know all that in 30 seconds? Is that what your brain was meant to do right. is take in five random pieces of information that you cannot hook to anything. And now it's just floating. Should I go to Tampa Bay? Like what? You weren't thinking about that. Your brain is so different from mine because when all those things pop up, I could care less. I'm instead mm -hmm. looking at like, oh, wow, look at the fantastic weekend they had. Or, oh, <laughs> wow, great. look at like their child's in soccer and my child's not. Shoot, should I start putting my kid in soccer? So that's the difference yeah, between your brain interesting. and my brain. But that's interesting. So yeah. different. You know? I know. But let us know what you guys think about this. What do you think the culprit is? We would love to hear from you as well.